Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a Django and React authentication slash login system. This is not the first video in this series, in fact we've already done seven before, in which we've completed the initial setup and completed the process for registering users. And we also already completed the login functionality inside of our Django backend using Django REST Nox. In this video, we're going to tie that together to our front end and we're going to enable the login functionality from the browser all the way to our backend. And we're going to do that by following five main steps. We're going to start by changing our login.js file uh, so we can use our customized forms that we've changed in the previous videos. Next, we're going to be creating the login API call so that we can successfully make requests to our backend. And then we're going to check what our backend sends back to our React.js frontend. As the last two steps, we're going to store the response data inside of our local storage so that we know that the user is authenticated. And we're going to test if everything works the way that we expect. So as a little bit of a recap, in the previous video, we've enabled the login functionality in our backend. And that means if we go to the localhost 8000 slash login, that we can use an email and a password to login and get a token back from our backend, which we can then use to make different requests to our backend, all in a secure manner. Now in this video, we need to continue. We need to make sure that we can do that same request, but then from our React.js frontend and not through this API backend. The second thing that we also did a couple of videos ago was focusing on user registration. And in there, we used React hook forms to make sure that all of our forms work exactly the way that we expect. Uh, however, we only did that for registration, because if we now go to our login page, we can see that we get nothing because our forms have not been changed there. So that is actually the first thing that we're going to do inside of this video. So let's go over to our code and actually start making some changes to our login page. So we're going to go to the front end folder and then to the login.jsx file. And you can see right here in the forms that the only parameter that we currently use is label. Um, however, if we go to the register page, you can see that we made some changes that we now also need to put in a name and control to make sure that this form works correctly. So I'm going to copy over those two things, go to my login page, and for the forms that we have right there, I'm going to add a name and the control over here so that that works the way that we expect. And we're going to do the same thing for our password field where the name is going to be password, and we also will have control right here. Now it's nice that we've added those two things right here, but we also need to add all of the form components from React Hook form to make sure that this control can actually be passed into these forms. So we're going to go over to our register page, and we can see right here that we can start by defining the use form and also importing it on the top of our file. So we're going to go back to our login.jsx file, and on the top there we're going to create the constant with handle submit and control from use form. And in addition to that, we're also going to copy over this command right here so that we can actually use the use form instance like this. Because now control has been defined. And you can now see that our forms are back on our screen and everything seems to be working correctly. Now, the next step is to make sure that we have the same logic in our login page as in our register page. Uh, and some of the things that we need to change are, for example, the submission, where we add the total logic for making a request to the login page, but also some of the things like actually specifying the form tag inside of our code and changing our button so it is a submit button. So first things first, we're going to copy over this form tag right here, and we're also going to put that inside of our login page. So after the background tag right here, we put the form tag so that this whole thing is connected to our use form. And then we also need to close it off on the bottom right here, like this. Now, the second thing that we also need to do is we need to take a look at the button that we use. Um, because right here, we changed it a little bit so that it has a type of submit, so that it knows that it is a submit button and also a label for register. So I'm going to copy over this type of submit, and we're going to add that same logic to our button on the login page. So next to the label, we also have a submit type right there. Okay, and with that in there, we should be all ready to make our actual submission. Now, even for that part, we can go to our register page and copy over the majority of what is going to happen there. So let's take this 
and put it right there. And now what we don't need to forget is that we use Axios instance here. So we also need to import that into our page. So we're going to import Axios instance from our Axios instance, like this. And now we can use this to make requests to our packet. Now we're not going to make a request to our register page because we have seen right here that we need to make a request to login. So in here, we're going to change this to login. Now we can see that we still need an email and a password right here. So we actually don't need to change any of the things that we get here. And after this call has been completed, so we have logged in successfully, I hope, I don't want to go to the login page, but I want to go to the slash home page because I want to go uh, actually inside of my application. Now, another important thing is that we, of course, want to use the token that we get back. Uh, and to make sure that that works, we need to do something with the response. So what we're also going to add inside of our then statement is we're going to say response. And then I'm going to do console.log and in here put in response. Because when we're going to test this out, I actually want to see the response that we get uh, before moving on. Now, um, because I want to check out what is going on with this response, and I don't necessarily want to go to the home page immediately, I'm just going to comment out this navigate to the home page so we can see what happens when we make this initial call to login page. Now, another thing that I'm going to add to this is a uh, catch statement. So what I'm going to do is dot catch. And in here, we open two round brackets. And in this first one, I'm going to state error. And then we can do an error function like this. And we can open some square brackets. And in here, we can do console.error. And we can specify that we have an error during login. And then the value that actually is going to show is going to be equal to error. So now when actually something goes wrong, we can also log that and see what is going on inside of our application. And this should actually be all of the logic that we need to make this same login request what we did in our backend user interface through our frontend user interface. So let's see what now happens if we want to make a login request. Uh, and I'm also going to open my console so we can see exactly what is being logged inside of the response. Now, what we expect to happen is actually very simple. Uh, inside of our views at Python in the user folder, you can see that we have defined uh, this function as follows. If the user authenticates with the correct credentials, we expect it to send back a response that has the user, uh, and in there it will pass in the data from the user, but it will also return us with a token. And this token is going to be very important because that's going to allow us to make all different kinds of requests to our backend. So this is also the response that we uh, expect to see once we log in with an existing user. So let's try that out. And we're going to do that by using email at email.com, because I think that is inside of our database, and then use testing321 as our password. And then when we click login, let's see what happens in the console. So you can see that we've now received a response right here. And inside of that response, we can see under the data tab that we are receiving a token and also the user data in email. So that seems to be all, all right. Now in our response, we clearly see this token right here. And what we now want to do is we want to store this token inside of our local storage so that we can get it from there and then use it to create API requests, but also to validate whether the user is authenticated or not. Um, and to move it into our local storage, we need to make a little bit of a change to our code. Uh, because right now, nothing really happens inside of our frontend, and we need to change that. So we're going to back to our login.jsx file, and after the .then statement, we're going to simply add it to our local storage by doing local storage .set item, And we're going to set an item called token. And in there, we're going to say that we want to set that to response.data.token. Now, the reason that we want to set it there is that this entire thing that is returned to us is called response. Uh, in here, we've got a category called data, and inside of data, you find the token. So that's the reason why we put it right there. 
So now if we save this, if we log in again, we should see that after we have logged in, it will add this token to our local storage. Uh, and then once it is there, we can use it to authenticate ourselves to our backend and also to check whether the token is actually there to make sure that people cannot just access our application uh, without having a token. So back to our login page again. And I'm first going to show you where you can actually check your uh, local storage. You do that by going to right click and then inspect. And inside of inspect, you have a category. If you click on the arrows called application. And inside of application, you can see that you have something called local storage. And I can here see the local storage of my local host 5173. And currently we, also, we only have something in here called debug, uh, which is equal to some value. But this is also the place where we want to see our token. So now when I click login again, hopefully it should add the, a new entry to our local storage called token. So let's try it out. Okay, and when we, once we've clicked it, you can see that our new token is actually created right here um, with this particular value. And now when we use local storage item and refer to token, we can get this value and then pass it inside of our APIs so that we can make a secure connection to our database. Now, what this would actually look like in practice is we would also like to navigate to our homepage uh, so that the user actually goes somewhere. So I've now put in navigate slash home. And another thing that we then need to do is of course define this navigate. So I'm gonna to go to register.jsx and in here you can see that we import use navigate and we use navigate to determine where we need to go. So I can go to my login file right here and define the constant of navigate using use navigate. And then we also need to copy over the import from use navigate and use it right here. So we can actually go somewhere after we have made this request. And now when we are back in our login application, we can go to email at email.com. We can do testing three, two, one. Let's just check that. Yeah, that is indeed testing three, two, one. And now when we click login, we are redirected to our home page right here. And even here, if we inspect it and we go to application and the local storage, we should be able to see our token inside of the local storage. Yeah, you can see right here that we now have this token right here. And that is actually all that we're going to be doing for today because we've successfully set up the functionality for login in through our React.js frontend. And we're going to continue with focusing a little bit on protecting our React.js frontend. Right now we have a token uh, right here, but nothing stops users currently to just go to this location without a token uh, and still get here. So in the next video, we're going to add protected routes, which is going to check whether we have a token. And if we don't have a token, it will navigate you to the login page. And in the video after that, we're going to focus on making requests to our backend using this token so that we can only get data from our application once we have a valid token there. I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.